after they were seen isn't surprising because that scientific instant CNN ORC poll that was done after the debate, you had two to one people saying they thought Hillary Clinton bested Donald Trump. And of course, that included a lot of Republicans who thought that. And, and beyond a national poll, I mean, obviously what matters really are battleground state uh, polls. And I think there are a couple of those out now, right? That's right. And she's seen some success there as well. This is Nevada. And you see that she has a six point lead over Donald Trump there. The reason this is significant is because weeks ago, Donald Trump was leading Hillary Clinton. So now she has a pretty uh, decent lead here, and she's looking forward to next week when Elizabeth Warren is going to be heading out there trying to build some enthusiasm for her that she needs. Let's check out Michigan. She's up seven points here. This is a place where Donald Trump is hoping that his anti-free trade agreement uh, uh, stances are going to help him. But she also has a lead there, and Bernie Sanders, who uh, gave her a surprise upset in the primary here, is going to be campaigning for her in Michigan in the coming weeks. Check out the Granite State. She's got a seven point lead here as well as she does in Michigan. This is about on track for where she has been, but certainly this is good news for Hillary Clinton. And very important is Florida, the sunshine state where she has a four point lead. Of note here, this is outside of the margin of error, so we know that this is a real lead, Anderson. And this is considered a must-win state for Donald Trump. So Hillary Clinton trying to uh, deprive him of that and certainly is hoping that her firewall is running right through Florida. Fascinating to look at. Brianna Keeler, thanks. Joining me now is CNN senior political analyst and former advisor to four presidents, David Gergen, CNN political analyst and USA Today columnist Kirsten Powers, and CNN chief political correspondent Dana Bash. Dana, national polls, state polls, good news certainly for Hillary Clinton. That said... There's still more than a month to go. A lot can change in those polls, as we've seen before. It, it, that's true. And I think it's important to note that the fundamentals of this race still seem about the same. I mean, certainly after the Democratic convention, Hillary Clinton got a, got a real bump, then that evaporated, and we were kind of back to where, uh, where the race was before. There was, a, as Brianna was just talking about, just nationally, there was a slight uptick for Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump hasn't changed. Uh, the thing that that uh, should concern the Trump campaign are those battleground states, Nevada in particular. Uh, if that state continues to trend so favorably towards Hillary Clinton, uh, then that could be kind of a, a, a show where it's going to happen in other battleground states, yeah. particularly those with high minority voters. David, how concerned should the Trump campaign be about, about these numbers, especially when you take them together with his debate performance? He, of course, is looking at online polls and talking about online polls, which are not scientific and really pretty much meaningless. They should be very concerned, Anderson, because this race is as fluid as it remains. Uh, the fact is that much is going to depend upon the momentum. Uh, and once a candidate has momentum, we've seen this in the past on both sides, it tends to increase their, their numbers. Uh, they look better. And Donald Trump had a lot of momentum going into that first debate. She has the momentum now because it's not just the debate that we're talking about these days, but it's also the, the post-debate, uh, which has been a horrible week for him, as far as I can tell. And you can tell in that Fox poll, he's like 20 points behind among women. He needs to stop digging this hole. He needs to get off this conversation uh, uh, about Miss Universe and yeah. get back to the real issues. Yeah, I mean, and again, we're going to talk more about this in just a second. But the fact that he's tweeting, you know, before dawn about Miss Universe still on, what, day, four days since the debate. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. Kirsten, the, the, the forecast that Clinton has simply, uh, you know, more paths to 270 electoral votes than Trump does, that. That's the reality of the so-called Obama coalition from the, from the past two cycles. So Trump has always had his work cut out for him, certainly, and it doesn't seem to be getting any easier. Yeah, that's right. But like David said, he did definitely have the momentum, and it did, did seem that things were sort of shifting in his direction, and he managed to sort of turn that around with one debate. And we have two more debates. Right. And so what's going to happen in those debates, I think, is the big question. If he shows up and does the same thing again, then I think I would expect to see the polls continue to shift in her direction. And just a few points is pretty meaningful in a race like this, because we have such a polarized electorate that we're not going to, you know, a landslide would be, you know, seven or eight point win or 10 point win. And so, you know, if she just gets a couple more points, she's in pretty solid and shape. 
And, and just quickly, Anderson, the other thing to remember is somebody else had not such a great week, and that's Gary Johnson. And in a, a, yeah. a lot of these polls, really all of these polls, uh, the libertarian ticket is polling pretty well, considering. So if the fact that he couldn't name a world leader uh, that he liked, even though he was given 50 seconds to do so, and, and other missteps that we've seen from him over the past week starts to seep in, even with those who are just not into either of the party uh, major party candidates that could potentially help Hillary Clinton or at least test the theory that he's taking votes away from her. Yeah. Um, uh, thanks, uh, everybody, for, for looking at those poll numbers, analyzing them for us. Uh, we'll get back to the panel later. Trump apparently did not get much sleep last night, as we said. He was busy tweeting about the former Miss Universe, among other things, who he said gained too much weight. He was back on the campaign trail tonight after a pre-dawn tweet storm in which he continued to lash out at the former Miss Universe. Jason Carroll joins us now with that. Uh, walk us through this. I mean, what's the latest? Well, when it comes to those tweets, Anderson. Uh, Trump is saying that tweeting is an effective form of communication. One of his advisors uh, basically coming out uh, earlier today and saying that what you see on Twitter isn't necessarily the message of the campaign, but try telling that to Donald Trump. Donald Trump up early this morning and not letting up on his attacks on former Miss Universe Alicia Machado. The GOP nominee tweeting before dawn, wow, crooked Hillary was duped and used by my worst Miss You. Hillary floated her as an angel without checking her past, which is terrible. Trump adding, did crooked Hillary help disgusting check out sex tape and past Alicia M become a U.S. citizen so she could use her in the debate, yet offering no proof that such a sex tape exists. Hillary Clinton responding with a tweet of her own. What kind of man stays up all night to smear a woman with lies and conspiracy theories? And during a campaign stop in Florida later in the day... I mean, his latest Twitter meltdown is unhinged, even for him. It proves yet again that he is temperamentally unfit to be president and commander-in-chief. During Monday night's debate, Clinton raised Machado's accusation that Trump called her Miss Housekeeping and Miss Piggy after she gained weight following her Miss Universe win in 1996. Her name Where is did Alicia you find Machado, Where did you find and it? she has become a U.S. citizen, and you can bet oh, really? she's going to vote okay. this November. Okay, good. Trump has kept the story alive by criticizing Machado on a daily basis, even as he pushes back on reports some of his advisors were not happy with his debate performance and are considering overhauling his approach before the second meeting with Clinton. This as Trump continues to cite unscientific online polls that are not true measures of public opinion. Every single online poll said we won, which is great. Every single online poll. And as for those accounts of debate discord, Trump tweeting, remember, don't believe sources said by the very dishonest media. If they don't name the sources, the sources don't exist. Trump also at odds with the USA Today editorial board. The paper's board has never taken sides in a presidential race, but is urging voters to consider anyone but Trump this year, writing, Republican nominee Donald Trump is, by unanimous consensus of the editorial board, unfit for the presidency. The Dallas Morning News and the Arizona Republic, which historically have supported Republican candidates endorsing Clinton this year. Trump slamming the media outlets on Twitter, writing, the people are really smart in canceling subscriptions to the Dallas and Arizona papers, and now USA Today will lose readers. The people get it. And Jason is uh, back with it. I, I just want to go back to this notion. I mean, I don't even know if it's that Donald Trump woke up early to start tweeting. I mean, do we know if he even went to bed? Because, I mean, some of these tweets, I, as I understand it, I think it went from like 3 a.m. to, to 5.30, didn't it? That's correct. And as you know, Anderson, look, tr Trump has said in the past that he doesn't need that much sleep at night, maybe four, maybe five hours it's, uh, you know, to sleep, at, you know, at best. But what, what seems to be very clear here is the result. And a number of GOP leaders have made it very clear that the, what they want to see going forward, less tweets, more focus on the issues. Yeah, I mean, it's just incredible that a candidate for president, or one of two candidates, or one of two people who's going to be probably president of the United States, mm. is up late at night tweeting about uh, an alleged sex tape, which there's no evidence that even exists, but uh, just that the, a person is talking about a sex tape is... 
I, it was surprising to me. Jason Carroll, Jason, thanks. Coming up, even though he was up in the middle of the, uh, the night tweeting, Trump says he doesn't think he took the bait when all of this started at the bait. Uh, at the debate. We'll talk about that next, plus what Trump and the debate commission are saying now about his microphone uh, during the debate. My companies and our